Welcome to our new short series called 12 Integrals, where for the next 12 days, I'm going to be showing you 12 videos all about integration. Some videos will be interesting techniques of integration, while some videos will just be how we apply integration into other maths problems. And this series is purely experimental. I don't know how this will come out, but let's hope it comes out well. So without wasting any more time, let's get right in to the first video today. Okay, so let's not start off too complicated just yet. All we're going to do today is we can integrate one integral, which isn't actually too bad. In fact, it's quite straightforward if you know what you're doing. So let's get right into it. Um, try to integrate this integral, which is sine of r cosine of x with respect to x, where r cosine is obviously the inverse of cosine. I'll give you a time and in a second I will reveal the answer to you. You ready? All right, let's do it. Now, in order to solve this integral, you basically just have to know your trigonometry pretty well. In particular, you need to know your trig functions and how they are defined. And you also need to know some trig substitution and a few trig identities. Okay, so have you made sure that you know all of these three things? If so, let's continue. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to change this sine of r cosine of x into something that looks a bit better that we could probably actually do some integration with. So let's consider the r cosine of x bit first. Let's say r cosine of x equals to something else, like, like alpha, for example. So then I could rewrite r cosine of x equals to alpha as x equals to cosine of alpha. And we know that cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So if I have a right angle triangle like this, I could let this side be x and this side equals to 1. And this angle would have to be alpha. And then this makes sense. Cosine of alpha will equal to x. Now the other side I could find very easily using the Pythagorean identity. And it would equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then because alpha is equal to our cosine of x, it's super easy to find what sine of r cosine of x equals to. Sine of r cosine of x is just sine of alpha, and that just equals to the square root of one minus x squared. And so now we've reduced our integral from this mess to the integral of the square root of one minus x squared with respect to x. And so now that you've reduced your trig identity down into something that looks a bit simpler, we can just go on and integrate that. And if you've done calculus at, say, college level, and you know trig substitution, this bit is super easy. But for those of us who don't, I'll try to walk through it. So we have to do some clever substitution to try to get rid of that square root. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let x equal to sine of theta. Now this is gonna be interesting, and you'll see that it all actually works out. And so as reference, I will be writing two more things. I'll write that cosine of theta will equal the square root of one minus x squared. Uh, that is something that you could actually show using a very similar way that we used to reduce that down into, um, into this. Um, you could just try to work it out. It, it all works out. And I'm also gonna write one more thing. I'm also gonna write that the derivative of x with respect to theta equals to cosine of theta. That's just your trig um, equation, which means that dx equals to cosine theta d theta. And so now I'm going to replace everything into that integral so that we could reduce that integral down into the following. 1 minus x squared, that's going to just be cosine of theta, right? Because, you know, as we as we said, this could be shown, and I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. So this becomes cosine theta, and dx is cosine theta d theta. So that's, I'm just going to change that as well. So cosine of theta d theta, which is the same as cosine squared theta d theta. Now, there's two ways you can go about this bit next bit, is you could either do integration by parts on that equation, which might take a bit longer, or the other way is you can just use a trig identity, which goes the following. It is cosine squared of theta 
equals to a half plus a half cosine two theta like that. That's one of the things called the double angle formula. And so now that we have that bit sorted out, I could replace this cosine theta according to that, and I will get the following. I'm gonna get um, this. I'm gonna just put this a half in like that, a half cosine of two theta d theta. Now this bit could just be integrated simply and I'm going to leave you guys to figure out that it would actually equal to theta over 2 plus um, sine of 2 theta over 4. And that could be shown, right? Um, you can figure out why. Uh, now, sine 2 theta also has another identity that it equals to, right? So sine of 2 theta... Um, sine of 2 theta equals to 2 sine theta cosine theta like that and so now just putting this back into the identity again and you'll get the following theta over 2 plus um, the 2 here will cancel with the 4 and it'll be left with a uh, divided by 2 so it would be sine theta cosine theta divided by 2 but because our integral was in terms of x, and this is in terms of theta, we have to turn this theta back into being in terms of x. So, what this will equal to is theta, because x is sine theta, theta will just be inverse sine of x, or arc sine of x over 2, plus sine of theta is just x. Cosine of theta is just the square root of 1 minus x squared, divided by 2. And of course, Constant of integration, don't forget that. And so, basically, our final integral, the integral of sine of r cos of x equals to r sine of x over 2 plus x times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 2. And there is your final answer right there. Embrace it. Have fun with it. Take it after dinner. I, I, I don't know.